What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today we are diving deep and I mean cellular deep into one of the most fascinating peptides emerging in longevity science today known as MOTS-C. M-O-T-S-C. By the end of this video you'll know what it does, how it works, the science behind it, concepts, safety data, and where the research is actually heading. But remember, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a pharmacist, I'm not telling you to take any of these peptides. This is purely information only for educational purposes. Nothing other than that. So if you want to learn a little bit more about this peptide and what it does, stick around. All right, I'm going to get a little sciencey here. So MOTS-C stands for Mitochondrial Open Reading Frame of the 12S lowercase r capital RNA type dash C. What does that mean? Well, we're going to try to get into it as much as possible. Yes, it's a mouthful, but what's revolutionary is where it comes from. And I'm going to touch base on that. So from my understanding is, unlike most peptides uh, derived from nuclear DNA, MOTC actually originates from mitochondrial DNA. So mitochondria is like our our own cellular batteries, right? They contain their own genome and they're passed down maternally. This classifies MOTC as a mitochondrial derived peptide or MH, I mean MDP, I'm sorry. Um, basically along with peers like uh, humanin and SHLP peptides. Why is this cool? Because mitochondria are deeply involved in energy metabolism, cellular stress response, longevity signaling, and even inflammation control. Meaning MOTC sits at a powerful biological crossroad. What does MOTC do in the body? All right, so the science so far has actually shown the effects of improving insulin sensitivity, um, enhancing glucose utilization, uh, promotes fatty acid oxidation, stimulates AMPK activation, it increases energy capacity, it supports metabolic flexibility, and it reduces age-related decline in muscle. Okay, so MOTC signals the nucleus to upregulate stress response genes against metabolic dysfunction, essentially acting as a metabolic emergency responder. MOTC redirects metabolism towards glycolysis during cellular stress. Translation, it helps cells keep running when energy supplies get a little weird. All right, so this is where we go a little bit deeper here. All right, so AMPK activation. AMPK equals the cell's energy sensor, okay? So when ATP is low, AMPK switches the body into fat burning, glucose uptake, mitochondrial biogenesis. Let's now talk about folate methionine cycle modulation. All right, so MOTC inhibits the folate cycle during stress. Basically, it lowers purine synthesis and pushing cells into glycolysis. This protects mitochondria, it maintains energy levels, and it reduces oxidative stress. When stressed, MOTC physically moves into the nucleus and functions like a gene regulator. So it's basically increasing its survival pathways. Once in this pathway, MOTC, it actually modulates cell stress uh, kinase signaling. So what this does is it helps reducing that inflammatory adiposis, okay? Bottom line, it safeguards cells during metabolic crisis. Let's kind of veer away from some of that heavy science stuff real quick. And let's talk about what the effects are on exercise and performance. All right. So MOTC is actually through human and animal studies. Um, it's shown to increase endurance. Um, it's shown to have a higher lactate threshold. Uh, there's also shown to be some delayed exhaustion and then also better recovery. What's interesting is that one mouse study actually showed about 15% improvement in treadmill time to exhaustion. So MOTC essentially mimics exercise-induced gene activation. That's pretty crazy. As we age, MOTC levels actually drop. Okay, and this drop correlates with muscle loss or sarcopenia is the clinical term. Uh, it also um, correlates with reduced metabolic flexibility, uh, increased inflammation, and insulin resistance. MOTC is shown to protect muscle stem viability. Um, 
also improve muscle fiber composition and enhance glucose metabolism. So this places MOTC squarely in the longevity peptide category. Some other studies actually also demonstrated uh, reduced visceral fat. Um, increased brown adipose activation and improved calorie partitioning. Through AMPK and metabolic stress signaling, MOTC actually turns stored fuel into usable fuel. It's not a fat burner gimmick, it changes cellular performance. And yes, we're even going to bring up cognitive neuroprotection because well, let's just say this, this is one of the lesser known benefits of this, but it's actually shown some neural anti-inflammatory effects. It's shown some improved mitochondrial resilience and enhanced glucose handling in neurons. Pre-clinical work suggests potential use in Alzheimer's pathology, cognitive decline, neuroinflammation, um, and basically what happens is this is done by maintaining mitochondrial potential and limiting ROS damage. Let's talk about dosing protocols, okay? But remember, this is educational purposes only. This is not medical advice, okay? Most clinical frameworks show about 10 to 15 milligrams subcutaneous, about two to three times per week, split up a little bit, um, for about a duration of two to six weeks. Uh, what I've seen was uh, four weeks on, four weeks off, four weeks back on. There's been some athletes that actually run this pre-event or they call them like pre-event cycles. So they do like 10 milligrams daily for like seven to 10 days before their competition. Um, older adults seeking some type of metabolic improvement probably should use 10 milligrams three times weekly for about six weeks. Um, and maybe just do it twice per year. That should be plenty. So with this, you have approximately four to five hours of that plasma active window. So that's that's basically like the half-life. Um, for secondary genomic effects, this lasts a few days, all right? Um, many have actually dosed this prior to training to amplify that AMPK um, activation. Let's talk about its safety, especially when it came to some of those human studies. It actually showed low toxicity, all right? It showed really good tolerability. It had no significant hepatic strain, meaning on the liver, so no liver strain. Um, it showed no kidney stress markers and minimal immune response. So really not too much of an effect, like kind of like when you take a vaccine and your body has like the flu-like symptoms afterwards, none of that with this. That's because MOTC is endogenous, all right? So your body already knows that this is a peptide, all right? But it does have some reported side effects, all right? So some of them can be like temporary fatigue, maybe some mild nausea, um, warm flushing. So like it's just got a warm feeling throughout your body um, and slight hypoglycemia, but it's very rare. This was probably the, the least uh, noted side effect through MOTC. You might want to talk to your doctor. In fact, if you're going to use this, talk to your doctor first if he's, he or she knows about peptides. But I would say that for anybody who's especially pregnant or has any active cancers or even uncontrolled hypoglycemia, definitely talk to a doctor first before trying any of these peptides, um, especially with those three indications right there. I will say this though, from some of the research I've been reading is that MOTC is one of the most exciting breakthroughs in metabolic and longevity science. By activating AMPK, supporting mitochondrial integrity, improving insulin signaling, protecting muscle and enhancing exercise performance, it sits at the center of metabolic optimization. So as research grows, we may actually see MOTC become a mainstream clinical option, especially for metabolic disease and even just healthy aging, all right? Do me a favor, if you stuck around this long, like, hit the subscribe button, and leave me a comment if you want me to continue with doing some deeper dives into these clinical peptides. See you on the next one. Coach Mark, out.